everybody! In this video we are going to continue our journey learning about different textures and how to draw them. And in this one we are going to focus on this crystal. So we're going to look at some different smooth, clear, reflective, and also rough textures and how they can complement one another. I honestly, I feel like when you can physically touch an object and you can actually like look at the details of it up close, that's going to help you so much in kind of determining the textures and the way the light hits it. Um, having that sort of like physical manipulation is really going to be useful. Obviously that can't always happen, but it's a really helpful tip. As I am focusing on this like simple sketch of my crystal here. Um, I want to kind of assess my values. So lights and darks, what's standing out, what's, you know, really smooth, what's really dark. And I want to figure these things out before I get too into like specific sort of textures. So some main things that I'm noticing are like the differences between what's really smooth and what's really rough. Um, and so obviously my blending techniques are going to kind of affect how that appears on the paper. So I'm going to kind of look at the reflections within this first really smooth glass-like crystal. And to get that super smooth texture, I'm definitely going to need to use my blending stump. The different facets of the crystal kind of have pretty hard edges. And that's going to help give us the feeling of like having a reflection. As I'm looking at the crystal, I'm really paying close attention to the different values for one, the shapes that those values create, and that's helping me kind of place where they are, which is really building up the form. But I'm also looking at the texture of those values. So on this side of the crystal, it's almost kind of like bubbly looking. So my marks are kind of moving in smaller little circles. And then I'll go in with my eraser to pull out some of that texture as well as I get in there. Um, whereas this face is much more clear and, and glass-like. So, you know, I'm really just comparing how those different sides and edges kind of look compared to one another. And like when I have those really sharp edges, how or what what side is light or dark using those edges, and that's going to help me kind of define the form more. So as I have some of my base values in, I can go in with my blending stump and start smoothing them out, especially the edges or the facets that are very, very clear. I want those to be as smooth as I can get them. So remember, if you want your marks to be very smooth, you want to keep your pencil marks very close together, um, very soft and delicate. Um, otherwise, you know, when you go in to blend them with the blending stump, it's not really going to give you the results you're aiming for. Another thing I notice about these facets is that there's kind of these like horizontal marks in them, almost like they were cut. So I want to keep a little bit of that in there. And then it gets kind of smoky towards the bottom. So I'm just going to use what's left on the blending stump to pull those values downwards. And for this form, I'm really going to rely a lot on my Tombow eraser um, because I'm going to need to erase out very small details to help pull that texture forward. I notice that the edges of the facets have a very hard crisp line to them. Um, and then within the crystal, I notice these sort of like glowing 
central forms happening. So I want to kind of pull those out a little bit with my eraser and sort of like the different imperfections within the form that kind of catch the light. I'm going to do similar things on each facet as I see them. This side has sort of this pocked bubbly texture so I'm going to go in and just kind of like dab across it with my eraser to create that texture and then get that crisp edge of light. I'm going to go in and refine that with the pencil as well. So it's starting to give us that feeling of almost like glowing and that's really what we're aiming for here. So obviously you can change the direction of your pencil to get a crisper edge instead of using the side of it. You can use the point. My hand is falling asleep from holding this crystal. <laughs> it's surprisingly heavy, <laughs> but I don't want to put it down because I don't want to lose the angle that I have it at. <laughs> That's definitely the biggest challenge of working from life versus working from a photograph is you know, life is three-dimensional and it, you know, changes. <laughs> and yeah, photos are two-dimensional and static, so they just, you know, stay the way you put them. Much easier to draw from that way, but I like a good challenge. And it allows me to see my details much, much better and really kind of like see that texture in a way that I can't with my photos. So, you know, like I always say, art is pain. That's why they call it painting. Do you get it? <laughs> oh, God. Ooh, yeah, that's starting to look very nice. Um, another thing that helps to get these edges is, like, I'll just pretend that I have a nice dark background here. I mean, I, it is kind of dark, but that'll also help define my edges of the crystal, so get some of that not perfect lines, you know, it kind of goes in and out just a little bit. So that's feeling very nice. It's getting some nice reflective light in there. I'm going to keep pulling out my reflections. Honestly, this is just a big back and forth. Um, I'll lay some graphite down, I'll pull some up, just things are always changing and we're always kind of reassessing what we're doing to create what we need to create. Another helpful tool would be having a little drafting brush to get rid of your eraser bits. It's always a good way to prevent smudging. Now as I move to these smaller uh, crystals, I notice like the bottom of this one is kind of facing away from me. So I want my marks to be kind of going at an angle to give it kind of this feeling of perspective. And I mean, obviously the marks are really like blended together, but still like the fact that they are going in that direction, even though you can't necessarily tell, it will make a difference. My hand is 100% asleep at this point. <laughs> I'm waiting to just drop this crystal. I'll probably put a hole in this paper. And I'm gonna move in the opposite direction with my marks on the top facet. And that's gonna give it almost like a chevron sort of appearance if you were to really see the marks by themselves. And these crystals are a little dirtier. They have like a little more texture to them, so I'm not going to be blending them quite as smooth as this more glassy one. So when I do start blending these, I'm just going to really lightly do a pass across them. I don't want to completely get rid of my pencil marks because I want to retain some of that texture. So I'm really just like fuzzing the marks just a little bit. I'm not, you know, completely obliterating them. 
Also, you have to think about how cool of a word obliterate is. It just rolls off the tongue. A great word. Should use that word more. It's a good one. Obliterate. Love it. All right, so once I kind of have this blocked in, I'm gonna go back in and start adding more of that texture. Again, with that back and forth with the eraser and the pencil. I'm thinking about the direction of my marks and how that helps create the texture I'm aiming for. Like if all my marks went in the same direction or whether they're more random. Um, like this has almost this kind of like scaly, dirty appearance to it. So I want my marks to be relatively circular, but also like still kind of random. There's a bit of reflected light right here, shining through the crystal where it's a little clearer. So I want to take a moment to bring that back. There's a very crisp edge right here between the two that I'll need to define. One thing I'm really trying not to do is create an outline. Like I don't, like these have hard edges, but they don't have lines. And that is something that takes a lot of practice to get to that stage where you're not creating a line, but you're instead creating an edge. Um, and so when I am doing that, like, I mean, I do start with a line, but then I'm really just using that as a barrier and then from there creating a value. So I'm building up values so that I have light and dark next to one another. And that is what creates my edge. There's a difference between them, whether the difference is in texture or the difference is in value, or maybe it's both. That is what differentiates our different objects and our different shapes throughout this piece, and really any piece. Um, we need to be able to differentiate that form and differentiate those values. And so again, we're not making lines, we're making edges. Very important. I'm going to go back and forth between my Tombow eraser and my kneaded eraser. Um, I really like how the kneaded eraser can just subtly pull out like just gentle little value gradations, whereas the Tombow eraser is going to be a little more aggressive. So when I need something to be more gentle, a little more soft, I'm going to rely on my kneaded eraser to kind of help me achieve that level of value and, and just subtlety. I'm also going to be kind of going back and forth between using the point of my pencil and using the side of my pencil. So obviously the point of my pencil is going to have a much harder edge, whereas the side is going to be much softer. So just depending on how much I need to create like very sharp, crisp lines, I'm going to just adjust the way that I'm holding my pencil. Now this section of the crystal that I'm working on right now is kind of interesting because it has like this spot right here is really smooth and glassy, whereas the rest of it is really rough and textured. Um, so I need to really kind of exaggerate the differences between the two to ensure that it's kind of like reading properly that I'm switching between those two textures. So my blending is going to need to be really important here. I'll get those really soft blends first for that glass-like texture. Get my harder lines with the Tombow eraser, and then I'm going to get the softer gradations with my kneaded eraser, just by gently kind of dabbing on there. So now I have my kind of smooth areas, and at this point I can just kind of like rough in that more kind of sandy texture. I will still blend this a little bit with my blending stump, but not nearly as much as the smooth side. I'm also going to kind of include some stippling in here. So just kind of like dotting with my pencil and that's going to help me create that sort of like uh, mottled, scaly, sandy texture. I really think stippling is kind of like an underutilized technique that can really 
give you awesome results. So, you know, if you don't use it that often, start throwing it into your repertoire. Yeah, and this face of my crystal has a lot of really interesting little markings on it. So at this point, I'm just really focusing kind of on the dark areas of the, the mottled sort of sandy texture, um, just to kind of get those areas of value in place. And once I have them in place, I can go and do a, just a gentle amount of blending. So just like we did earlier, instead of like really scrubbing in the texture, I'm just gently like brushing over the top of it. So very subtly blending. And I'm definitely going to need to go in with my eraser again to pull out sort of the textural highlights as well. And I want to kind of define the edge between the smooth and the rough just a little bit more. So I'm just kind of pulling in some darker values around it, um, but not too dark because it is relatively light in that section. I just want to make sure that I don't lose the texture when I blend it. I think that's probably the hardest thing when you're first getting started is it's really easy to rely too much on the blending stump and then you end up over blending and it gets really like mushy. And I think what a lot of beginning artists tend to kind of forget is that, you know, you can go back in and, and add that texture back and you can keep layering and it's not just like a one and done sort of thing. So you just keep going, um, keep layering, keep adding on there. And that's really what's going to create that sense of volume and texture in your work. I'm going back in to add in those stipple marks over the top of the blended stipple marks. Just pulling that texture back in. Redefining my edges a little bit more. So this part of the crystal is much more rough. Like it really just appears to be rock at this point. So I'm just kind of going in and drawing some of the cracks that I see and filling in kind of the darker shadows to help it sit back behind this other crystal. I'm going to define my edges just by adding in some shadow here. I'm not going to add the stuff that's behind all of this because I'd be drawing this for like years. So we'll just shade that out. Pretend it isn't there. Oh, much better. Much less overwhelming when we can erase half of the thing that we're holding. <laughs> so I'm just kind of doing a sort of scribbly texture here. And that gives me a nice feeling of sort of a rock-like surface as opposed to like that super smooth glass-like reflective surface of the crystal. Well, it appears it's the first Wednesday of the month at one o'clock. Got the sirens going off. <sighs> Nothing like a blizzard, being stuck in the house, teaching remotely, making videos, sirens going off. <laughs> What a wild ride today is. Will winter ever end? I don't know. So I could <clears throat> literally spend like probably two more hours on this just being finicky. Oh my god. <laughs> being finicky with these details, but uh, my hand hurts holding this crystal. I'm going to be whiny about it. It's like completely asleep. So I think I'm going to stop here. Basically, the whole purpose of this exercise was to really just focus on being able to differentiate between like rougher and smoother textures. And I feel like it's working pretty well. So that's it for this first set of textures. Hopefully you found some techniques that are helpful for you and useful that you can apply in your own work. Um, 
we've got a few more different textural techniques coming up next, so stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching and keep creating.